This videotape will introduce you to the procedures used when performing the daily locomotive inspection. There are several locomotive manufacturers and some models may differ from the one seen in this program. The purpose of the daily inspection is to ensure that the locomotive will operate safely and efficiently. The specific checks and tests that you perform are governed by the Code of Federal Regulations, or CFR, and your company's maintenance instructions. These must be referenced for the specific type of equipment you are inspecting. This video may not show every situation, application, or component that you may encounter. Copies of these manuals should be kept readily available for reference. The most important aspect of the inspection is safety, and safety begins with you. Make sure you use your personal protective equipment, including your hard hat, safety glasses, gloves, steel-toed work shoes, and hearing protection when needed. When working around locomotives, you must expect equipment to move on any track in either direction at any time. Forgetting where you are for even an instant can cause a fatal accident. So before starting your inspection, make sure that you have properly applied blue signal protection on the track and on the locomotive. For the purpose of inspection, the locomotive can be divided into three major areas. Below deck, above deck, and cab. As stated earlier, the two main references that detail the inspection standards are the CFR and railroad maintenance instructions. The CFR are the minimum standards governing locomotive inspection. Your own railroad standards will be more restrictive. Maintaining locomotives to the higher standard ensures compliance with the federal regulations and an extra margin of safety. When performing the daily inspection, it will be necessary to write a report of any defects found. To properly describe the location of the defects, it is necessary to have a system of identifying components. The number one or front end of the locomotive is designated by the letter F. Some locomotives have the F on a long hood and some have the F on the short hood. Components are numbered in ascending order from the front. Seated in the cab facing the end of the locomotive with the F, your right side corresponds with the right side of the locomotive. The wheels on the right side would then be referred to as R1 or right 1, R2, R3, and R4. On the left side of the locomotive, they would be referred to as L1, L2, etc. Throughout this program, reference will be made to the part of the Code of Federal Regulations where you can find complete details on specific inspection items. Locomotives must be inspected once each calendar day they are used. The operating company designates the inspectors. All systems and components must be free of any conditions that endanger the safety of the crew, locomotive, or train. These conditions include components that are not properly secured, fuel, oil, water, or steam leaks, accumulation of oil on electrical equipment, components that do not function properly, and cracked, broken, or excessively worn components. Begin the inspection with the below deck area. While at each end of the locomotive, check the handrails for condition and proper clearance. There must be a minimum of two and one half inches between the handrails and the car body. In addition, the handrail must be painted a contrasting color. Inspect the hoses and jumpers. Check their condition and ensure they are properly attached or stored. Make sure the pilot and snowplow are securely attached. And there is between three and six inches clearance between the bottom of the pilot and the top of the rail. Inspect the coupler and draft system to ensure they are in good condition. Make sure the coupler carrier is securely in place and not cracked. 
The middle of the coupler should be between 34 and 1 half inches and 31 and 1 half inches above the top of the rail. Make sure there are no cracks in the coupler and that the cutting levers and lifter are not broken or bent. Steps must be secured by half inch bolts minimum and the front of the bottom or switching step should be painted a contrasting color or illuminated. Check for a cracked yoke or draft gear and make sure the coupler pivot pin is securely in place. Check the entire locomotive to ensure a minimum clearance of two and one half inches above the top of the rail. The flexible sand nozzles are one exception to this rule. Inspect the wheels for defects. The most common defects are flat spots and normal wheel wear. The wheel must be repaired or replaced if flat or shell spots are more than two and one half inches in length or there are two adjoining spots that are each two or more inches in length. There is a gouge or chip in the flange that is more than one and a half inches in length and a half inch in width. If there is a seam running lengthwise that is within three and three quarter inches of the flange, a flange worn to seven eighths of an inch thickness or less, a flange height of one and one half inches or greater, rims less than one inch thick on a locomotive and road service, or less than three quarters of an inch on locomotives and yard service, a crack or break in the flange, tread, rim, plate, or hub, or a loose wheel or tire. Wheels may not be repaired by welding. Inspect the bearing box on locomotives equipped with plain bearings. The bearing should be packed with waste or an oil pad, and the journal reservoir should be checked for oil level and leaks. Inspect the visible part of the bearing closely to ensure that no babbit is being pulled from the face of the bearing. There are two types of roller bearing, oil and grease lubricated. Oil filled journals should be inspected for leaks, loose bolts or seals, cracks and heat discoloration. Grease lubricated roller bearings should be checked for grease leakage, loose bolts or seals, cracks and heat discoloration. Pedestal liners should be checked for brakes and excessive wear. Traction motors should be checked for signs of overheating and loose bolts, especially on wicks, gear cases, and suspension bearing caps. Ensure all drain plugs are in place and properly fastened. Check the traction motor nose support for brakes or cracks. Inspect the truck frame for cracks. Most locomotive trucks are designed to have clearance between the side bearings. This allows the truck to turn unrestricted around bends in the rail. Maximum clearance on side bearings may not exceed one fourth of an inch on each side or a total of one half inch on both sides. As long as the bearings are not in contact on both sides, minimum clearance is achieved. Check the safety hangers, which prevent spring planks spring seats or bolsters from dropping to the track in the event of a hanger or a spring failure. If any springs are broken or compressed, refer to CFR 229.65 for specific actions. Check for broken or cracked equalizers, hangers, bolts, gibs, or pins. Shock absorbers may not be broken or leaking clearly formed droplets of oil. Levers, rods, brake beams, hangers, or pins may not be worn more than 30% of their cross-sectional area. They may not be cracked, broken, or missing. All pins must be secured in place with cotters, split keys, or nuts. 
brake shoes must be fastened with a brake shoe key. Piston travel must not exceed one and a half inches less than the total piston travel listed on the FRA form in the cab, form 6180-49A. In this example, the total piston travel is eight inches. Allowable travel would be eight minus one and one half, or six and one half inches. Brake shoes should be renewed before any part of the shoe is worn into the backing plate. Inspect the fuel tank for leaks and make sure the mountings are secure. Next, ensure that air reservoirs are securely mounted and condensate is drained from the air system. Check that the fuel cutoffs on both sides of the locomotive are not damaged. After checking the number two end and the other side of the locomotive, check the locomotive top deck. Inspect the car body for damage, broken hinges, or other unsafe condition. Handrails must have two and a half inches clearance to the car body. Check to ensure that the safety chains are in place and properly fastened. Running boards and walkways should be free of any tripping hazards, such as tools, supplies, parts, oil, or sand. The engine compartment should be inspected for defects. Fan openings, exposed gears and pinions, exposed moving parts, pipes carrying hot gases, and high voltage equipment, switches, circuit breakers, contactors, relays, grid resistors, and fuses must be in non-hazardous locations or equipped with guards to prevent personal injury. Drive shafts must have safety hangers. Inspect the entire engine compartment for oil, fuel, water, and exhaust leaks. Inspect the engine and compressor mounting bolts. Check the level of lube oil, cooling water, governor oil, and air compressor oil. On some General Electric locomotives, it is also necessary to check the oil in the cloverleaf gear and fan drive. Check the tool rack for proper equipment, hammer, wrench, cotter keys, air hoses, runaround hoses, etc. Listen for and investigate any unusual noises in the diesel engine. When all the engine room checks are complete, move to the cab. Check the cab card, form 6180-49A, to ensure the locomotive is not overdue periodic inspection. Locomotives must be given a periodic inspection every 92 days. Inspect the cab seats, looking carefully for cracks or loose mountings. Check the operation of the adjustment and latches. Inspect the cab doors, making sure they close properly and that the latching device operates as designed. Check the weather stripping on the doors and windows, especially in the fall and winter months. Check the cab windows to ensure they provide an undistorted view of the right-of-way for the crew from their normal position in the cab and clean them as necessary. Check the windshield wipers for proper operation. Inspect the floors of cabs, passageways, and compartments, making sure they are free from oil, water, and waste, or any obstructions that create a slipping, tripping, or fire hazard. Make sure the floors provide secure footing. 
Check the operation of the cab heaters. All doors and cover plates guarding high voltage equipment must be marked and properly secured. The locomotive's brakes must be checked as part of the daily inspection. Start by applying and checking the operation of the handbrake. The last inspection date should be stenciled by the handbrake. The CFR states the carrier shall know before each trip that the locomotive brakes and devices for regulating all pressure including but not limited to the automatic and independent brake valves operate as intended. The complete test will depend on the type of brake equipment installed on the locomotive and should be covered in your company's maintenance instructions. These instructions should include but are not limited to the checking of the main reservoir safety valve which should open at 150 psi, the operation of the compressor governor, Typically, this will be set to start the compressor pumping at or below 130 PSI. Once started, the compressor must pump until the main reservoir pressure has been raised 10 PSI. Air gauges must not be more than 3 pounds per square inch in error. Brake pipe leakage may not exceed 5 pounds per square inch per minute. Check the operation of the emergency brake valve and verify that it is clearly marked. In addition, the alerter system or dead man pedal must be tested. And the crossing bell and horn should be checked for proper operation. After completing the air test, check the operation of the controls. Advance the throttle one notch at a time, noting the proper increase in diesel speed. Some locomotives do not increase diesel speed with every change of the throttle. Refer to the operator's manual for more information. With the brakes set and the engine secured against movement, notify all employees in the area and test the load in forward and reverse. Make sure that the locomotive does not move during the load test. Check the sanders for proper operation, forward and reverse. Next, check the lights. The bright and dim headlights, front and rear. The ditch lights, number and class lights. Check the operation of the order lights and gauge lights. Cab passageway and compartment lights must also be checked. Check warning devices and lights. Check the speedometer for damage. Perform an operational check of the radio. On locomotives equipped with onboard signal systems, perform the applicable daily test. Check for spare electrical fuses and replace as needed. Check the seal on the ground relay cutout and other critical safety or signal devices. Check the cab supplies signal flags, fusees, work reports, drinking water, and any other supplies designated by your company. Make sure that you make a written report of the daily inspection when you are finished. On the report you must put the name of the carrier, the initials and number of the locomotive, the place, date, and time of the inspection, a description of the non-compliant conditions disclosed by the inspection and the signature of the employee making the inspection. Any conditions that constitute non-compliance with the CFR must be repaired before the locomotive is used. The report must be filed and retained for at least 92 days at the maintaining terminal. A record shall be maintained on each locomotive showing the place, date, and time of the previous daily inspection. Let's review the points we covered. The locomotive can be divided into three major areas, below deck, above deck, and cab. The two main references are the CFR and railroad maintenance instructions. Locomotives must be inspected once each calendar day they are used. All systems and components shall be free of conditions that endanger the safety of the crew, locomotive, or the train.
These conditions include loose components, fuel, oil, water, or steam leaks, accumulations of oil on electrical equipment, improper functioning of components, and cracks, breaks, and excessive wear of components. Begin the inspection with the below deck area. It is critical that defects in the draft system, trucks, and wheels are found and repaired before they cause a derailment or other serious problem. The above deck inspection consists of inspecting the car body and engine room for damage, broken hinges, or any other unsafe conditions. When all the engine room checks are complete, move to the cab. Check the cab card, form 6180-49A, to ensure the locomotive is not overdue periodic inspection. Check the cab equipment for any defects. The locomotive brakes must be checked as part of the daily inspection. You must ensure before each trip that the locomotive brakes and devices for regulating all pressures, including but not limited to the automatic and independent brake valves, operate as intended. The complete test will depend on the type of brake equipment installed on a locomotive and should be covered in your company's maintenance instructions. Make sure that you make a written report of the daily inspection when you are finished. Not all locomotive types, such as six-axle locomotives, nor all inspection points or defects were discussed in this program. When performing inspections, you must consult the Code of Federal Regulations 49, parts 200 to 399, for the details of the specific locomotive that you are inspecting.